Okay, so let's talk about tautologies and contradictions. And these are actually pretty simple ideas, I think, when you get right down to it. All right. And I think if you understand one, you can pretty much understand the other. They're in a very real way mirror images of each other. So a tautology is a statement that is true on every single possible way of assigning the truth values in that statement. In other words, if you make a truth table for this statement with the connectives, you know, like the, the symbols that it uses, it will be true on every single line. Probably the very simplest example of a tautology is A or not A. You'll sometimes hear this called the law of excluded middle. You know, assuming, you know, again, in the real world things might not always be this clear, but assuming we can give a clear truth value to A, this statement cannot possibly be false. Remember, for A or not A to be true, well, we, only, we need one of two things. It either has to be that A is true or not A is true. Well, when A is true, A or not A is true. But when A is false, well, lo and behold, not A is true, so A or not A is also true. Every single line on this truth table, this statement is true. That is the most basic way of putting it, what a tautology is. And in a very real way, a contradiction is just the opposite of a tautology. Tautology is true on any way, you know, you assign the truth values to the statements that make it up. A contradiction is false on every possible way of assigning truth values to those statements. Or in other words, on every single line of the truth table, the contradiction is false. Here's an example. A and not A, right? For A and not A to be true, both A would A would have to be true but also not A. Well just given how this works if A is true, not A has to be false. And if not A is true, A has to be false. Just by the meanings of what these statements are, there is no possible way A and not A could be true at the same time. This statement is a contradiction. It is false on every single line of the truth table. Another way you might put this, another way people put it, tautology cannot be false and a contradiction cannot be true. Or you might say a tautology true by definition and a contradiction false by definition. But for purposes of our class, you know, we're trying to be very precise about all this, this truth table way of defining it, you know, true on every line, false on every line. That's probably better than these maybe looser definitions. Now, another way to look at this too is remember if a tautology is always true, well, what would the negation of a tautology be? Well, it would always be false, right? Negation of a tautology would be true only if the tautology were false. But since the tautology is always true, the negation will always be false. Well, guess what? That would be a contradiction, right? And well, the negation of a contradiction, well, that would be true whenever the contradiction is false. Well, since the contradiction is always false, it will always be true. Since it's always true, it's a tautology. The negation of a tautology is a contradiction. The negation of a contradiction is a tautology.
not A and not A, true on every single line, not A or not A, false on every single line, right? Now, I've been looking at, you know, the simplest possible examples, but actual tautologies and contradictions can be a lot more complicated. The ones that Smith is going to give you to work with are a lot more complicated. You know, if you find these tough, I find them tough, you know, they're easy, there wouldn't be much point in doing them, right? But anyway, just keep in mind these can be a lot more complicated, right? Look at these. Are these tautologies, contradictions, or neither? Think about it for a minute or two. Well, the first is a tautology, and the second is a contradiction, right? If you doubt this, you can look at this on the truth table. P and Q or not P and Q on one of these. Whenever P and Q together is false, not P and Q is going to be true. Whenever not P and Q is true, you know, one has to be true. So every line, it comes out true. You know, the other is just the opposite. This is false on every single line, it's contradiction. Because whenever P or Q is true, not P or Q will be false and vice versa. So this can't possibly be true. Well, what about this final one? You know. You might say to yourself, oh, but, but, you know, how can we tell? We don't know what Q and R are, you know. But think about it, right? For this to be true, P would have to be true. And one of these other statements would also have to be true, right? Not P and Q or not P and R. Well, each of those statements requires that not P be true. It can't be true if P is. This statement is also a contradiction, right? Whenever the first part of it is true, P, the other two statements, neither of them could possibly be true because they both have a not P in there, right? So, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Ideas simple when they get more complicated like this one or some of the curveballs Smith throws you. Yeah, it can be a bit trickier, but I think the basic idea should be pretty simple.